What a great day to be back, everyone. And here is Asia News for today. Still with me, Vanessa. Hundreds of Indonesian environmentalists take to streets to join global climate action. Hundreds of demonstrators and environmentalists took to the streets of Indonesian capital to demand action on climate change, joining global protests as part of the student-led Fridays for Future movement. As young people, we are gathering here to collaborate and work together as a collective group from various entities and regions to voice our aspirations regarding environmental issues so we can find solutions to climate change. We are tired of putting our hopes in the government because we have already been protesting like this since three years ago. We voiced our concerns to the government, yet they still ignore these issues. Beating drums and shouting slogans, the activists decried Jakarta's worsening air pollution while condemning government policies towards industrial coal-fired plants. Some carried flags with the words, the climate is changing, why aren't we, painted across them. If Jakarta is flooded, everyone who has money can live. Where do I go? I will drown here in Jakarta. Similar climate action protests were scheduled for South Korea, Britain and Brazil on Friday. Indonesia, the eighth biggest emitter of greenhouse gas in the world, plans to phase out coal for electricity by 2056 as part of a plan to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2060 or earlier. Philippine seeks Russian fuel purchase to curb inflation. The Philippines is in talks with Russia about buying fuel and other key bulk commodities amid high inflation. President Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos said in an interview with Bloomberg TV. The ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine has brought Philippines with soaring prices of food, fertilizers and other materials. The inflation rate of the country that largely depends on imports hit a four-year high of 6.4% in July and eased to 6.3% in August, according to the report released by the Philippine Statistics Authority. When asked about US-led sanctions against Russia, the president said that the political side of it has been a little tricky, but nonetheless, the national interest comes first. He added that the Philippines is looking for new sources of fuel and other inputs which are crucial to the country. Marat Pavlov, Russian ambassador to the Philippines, said that Russia is willing to cooperate with the Philippines to help it find alternative fuel sources in the face of surging oil prices. Super Typhoon Noru weakened after second landing in the Philippines. Super Typhoon Noru has weakened to a typhoon after it made its second landing in the Philippines at Sunday, according to the Philippine National Weather Service. Noru, the 16th typhoon of 2022, made its first landfall in Quezon Province, Philippines, at around 17.30 on Sunday at the level of Super Typhoon. According to the Philippine National Weather Service, Noru is the strongest typhoon affecting the Philippines so far this year. After landing, it will traverse Luzon Island and the capital region and central Luzon will be greatly affected. The Philippine government approved many areas to suspend work and classes on Monday. Affected by the bad weather, at least five international flights and 44 domestic flights were cancelled at the capital Manila International Airport. Residents have been forced to evacuate in places such as Polilo Island where the number 5 wind signal has been raised. Vietnamese coastal provinces brace for storm Noru. Vietnamese authorities were racing to prepare for storm Noru before its forecast to make landfall. Typhoon Noru weakened after passing through the Philippines on Sunday night and was headed out over the South China Sea towards Vietnam, where authorities were racing to prepare for its arrival. 
State media VTV reported the government warned of the threat of Nauru, anticipating what it said was one of the biggest typhoons to hit Vietnam in 20 years. Schools have been closed and boat owners were ordered to stay ashore in central provinces, while the government said it was ready to evacuate about a million people if necessary. Footage from the state media showed soldiers and people rushing to fortify homes, anchor boats and removing fish farm equipment in provinces along the coastline of central Vietnam. The National Weather Service also warned of heavy rain that will cause flooding and trigger landslides in affected provinces after the storm has passed. South Korean president says untrue reports damage U.S. alliance amid hot make controversy. Reports on hot mic incident untrue after he was caught cursing following a brief chat with U.S. President Joe Biden in New York last week. The alliance is essential in order to protect our people's life and safety. I'd like to say that damaging the alliance with reports that are different from the facts puts the people at great risk. Yun said such reports that are different from the facts will threaten to damage relations with the United States. His press secretary, Kim in hee dismissed the allegation, saying Yun was referring to the South Korean parliament without mentioning Biden. Reuters could not independently verify Yun's full comment. I think what really happened should be more clearly revealed. A series of gaffes and controversies overshadowed Yoon's first major overseas tour, which included visit to Britain and Canada, sending his rating plunging and inviting sketching criticism for some lawmakers even within his own party. Blinken praises her lateral partnership with Japan and South Korea. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken praised the trilateral partnership between the United States, Japan, and South Korea as he met with the foreign ministers of those countries on the sidelines of the U.N. General Assembly in New York City. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Yogi, Jin, wonderful uh, to be with you again, uh, and uh, wonderful to be with you um, in this trilateral format. Uh, the United States, uh, Japan, Korea, we have the most vital bilateral relationships, but we also have this trilateral partnership. And I think what we've seen uh, over the years, including in, in recent months, is that when we are working uh, together, um, we are even more effective. And we're more effective not only in dealing with uh, many of the regional security issues that are before us, but with a whole series of global issues that are front and center here at the United Nations uh, this week. Uh, so. Uh, for the United States, this trilateral partnership matters. Uh, it, makes, uh, it makes a difference, and I think uh, we can see that in the work that, uh, that we're doing together. So I'm grateful for us to be able to pursue uh, this work uh, here today in, uh, in New York, and welcome to both of you and to, our, to your teams. He made the remarks to the media as he met with the Japanese Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi and South Korean Foreign Minister Park Jin. Cambodian authorities rescue 11 Vietnamese victims of suspected cybercrime. Cambodian authorities rescued 11 Vietnamese victims of suspected cybercrime rackets in Bavet City, as news reports said, as authorities raided suspected cybercrime compounds in Cambodia. Footage from Vietnam's national television broadcaster VTV showed Vietnamese police speaking with the Cambodian officials at a red site operating as a casino in Svai Riang province. They also visited the rescued citizens who were staying in the guest house while awaiting clearance to leave the country. The Citizen Protection Department of the Vietnamese Embassy in Cambodia has come to the Vavet city to directly correspond with Cambodian authorities as well as to visit our citizens who are being held. We have also asked the Cambodian authorities to swiftly conduct verification and hand them over to the Vietnamese site soon. I can also see that the citizens are in stable health and undergoing verification procedures by the Cambodian site. 
Hiện tất cả 71 công dân Việt Nam. 60 Vietnamese citizens fled the casino before police conducted the raid and rescued the remaining 11 people, according to the news report. All 71 citizens returned to Vietnam. Victims of the cybercrime racket, including many skilled workers with the tech expertise, have said they were lured into Cambodia through social media advertisements, promising high-paying jobs at casinos and hotels, but were then forced by the racketers to live in the compounds and defraud strangers across the globe through internet romance and cryptocurrency scams. Well, that's the whole news for today. We will see you again soon. Stay safe, stay healthy.